Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video I wanted to explore a few scientific papers and try to discover how many Earths can we actually place in the habitable zone of our own solar system without causing any serious collisions. Let's play around with Universe Sandbox Square and welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So we know that TRAPPIST-1 um, is one of the most exciting star systems we've discovered in the last few years because it basically has seven Earth-like planets and quite a few of them actually are in the so-called habitable zone. Now this is the area of space where we kind of expect to potentially have liquid water. So in our own solar system, if you were to look at the habitable zone, it's sort of here. Uh, Mars is in it, Earth is in it, Venus not so much. There's actually two types of habitable zone that we've established. There is the more conservative one, which is in green, and the more optimistic one, which is in blue. The more uh, recent analysis showed that this is uh, from about 0.99 astronomical units to about 1.64 astronomical units, and this is um, as of 2017. Now, there's several papers that actually discuss the stability of orbits, uh, specifically in our own solar system, and one of the papers uh, I wanted to kind of focus on is basically a paper by two scientists, uh, Smith and Lissauer, that uh, have taken a look at uh, various uh, orbital parameters in our solar system and tried to basically discover how many Earth can we place in the habitable zone. And their analysis showed that uh, we could potentially have about seven uh, planets here. Or if you were uh, to place larger Neptune-like and Uranus-like planets, it would only be three much smaller Mars-like objects it would be quite a, quite a lot more. But it's really this we're kind of curious about. So there's seven, and specifically here they actually discovered the distance between orbits required for um, these orbits to be really stable. In other words, you could potentially place a lot more if you didn't care about the habitable zone. The distance they discovered is related to what's known as the hill sphere. And this is a, a picture from Wikipedia that kind of shows you where the hill sphere of planet Earth is. Basically, it's the area of gravitational influence. Anything inside the hill sphere of Earth will actually be orbiting around Earth. Anything outside will start orbiting the Sun. And this right here is right between the uh, hill sphere of Earth and also the stellar um, hill sphere, and basically creates what's known as a Lagrange point. Um, now, interestingly we have discovered that this distance from the center of Earth is about 1.5 million kilometers or approximately 0.01 astronomical units. And here's a free online calculator uh, from orbitsimulator.com that shows you how to discover the hill sphere for Earth and really any other planet as well. Basically, mass of Earth or mass of the smaller object divided by three masses of the Sun or the central object. Then you take the third uh, power root and multiply it by the distance between two objects. In this case, it's the semi-major axis of Earth, which is one astronomical unit. And what you get is 0.01 AU, which is about 1.5 million kilometers. Uh, the uh, scientists studying this, they discovered that um, approximately eight um, hill spheres is required to have a stable orbit. In other words, if my Earths have uh, approximately eight hill spheres between them, and don't forget, hill sphere will actually change with every single orbit here. So this is the largest hill sphere. This is the smallest because the distance actually does increase. Uh, so if they have eight hill spheres between them, they will be actually in a very, very stable orbit that will stay stable for like billions of years. And they've simulated this several times and they've discovered this to be true every single time. In other words, I could hypothetically place um, seven or approximately seven Earths in the habitable zone and still have a stable system. So let's see if we can maybe try to create this. We're going to remove Mars here and we're going to place this Earth a little bit closer at a distance of about 0.99 astronomical units. The next Earth, Earth number two, is going to go about eight here uh, hill spheres away from it, meaning that we're going to place it at a distance of about 1.07 astronomical units. Now let me place the rest and we'll see what it all looks like. I'm going to use the calculator to try to basically calculate all of the uh, requ required distances here and 
And I guess here we go. So we have seven Earths with these orbital parameters. 1.58, 146, 135, 25, uh, 16, 1.07, and lastly, this is 0.99 astronomical units. Now, this right here will actually be stable, according to the paper, and I actually have simulated this several times and uh, did get the same results. Uh, for billions and billions of years. In other words, you can easily have seven Earths in the same orbit and not worry about them ever colliding. But there is actually a trick you can do here, and technically somewhere out there there might be a star system that has that, where you could potentially place planets between these Earths moving in the opposite direction. And you can actually place just as many uh, in that particular location as well. Now, what is interesting is that uh, we have discovered a few retrograde objects, basically objects moving in the opposite direction in our solar system, but they are very far away and they kind of got that uh, partic particular rotation due to interaction with other larger objects. But let's say that if one day another star comes into our solar system and basically interacts with our sun in such a way that our sun somehow captures the planets from that star, and those particular planets actually move in the opposite direction, we could potentially get retrograde planets in the same orbit. Although it's more likely that this would be more or less engineered solar system where we actually build it. So anyway, can we actually try this again? So let's see if we can place a few more objects in between these Earths and have them orbit in the opposite direction. And let's see if this actually stays stable. Now to make this happen, I'm going to have to take our sun and basically flip it over. So we're going to change its uh, Z position to, I guess, 180 degrees should be fine. And this will allow us to basically place things in retrograde. Uh, and so now if I place an Earth, it's going to be orbiting in the opposite direction. Now, remember, we're placing them right between these orbits. So I'm, I'm actually going to just try to eyeball it without doing too much um, calculations. But let's see if we can do it. So. We're going to place one right here between these two orbits and it's going to be yet another Earth right in this region. It's going to be one right here. And here's what it actually looks like. So you may actually notice that these uh, 13 Earths are orbiting around one another and don't seem to actually do anything to each other. As a matter of fact, if I were to basically just zoom into one of these Earths, and just to see what ha what happens to it as it orbits around the sun, you'll notice that uh, it's basically passing by both sides. And one of the reasons it's actually not really getting kicked out of the um, of its own orbit and basically stays in a relatively stable orbit is that um, it gets sort of balanced out uh, by both Earths that it passes uh, that are basically coming toward it. So the Earth here and the Earth here balance out its orbit and make it go sort of in the middle. So even though it kind of gets moved just a little bit to the left now, now it gets moved back to the right. And uh, this continues for billions of years, and all of the simulations that the scientists behind this paper ran established that this particular sort of uh, pattern can last for at least 10 billion years uh, relatively easily, with a very, very high chance of stability. Now, this is just the first of the explorations we're going to be doing with placing planets around uh, the habitable zone in our star system, in our solar system. But I think this is definitely one of the cooler ones because technically, well, I guess when our uh, race can actually start modifying orbits and create its own star systems, if ever, hopefully, uh, we'll be able to create a really interesting star system or potentially even our own solar system where all of the planets can kind of coexist in the habitable zone and we can create these multi-worlds uh, similar to Earth that have slightly different um, habitable conditions. So the planets here will be a little bit more tropical, the planets on the outskirts will be a little bit more cold, but nevertheless they'll all have liquid water. And so all of the Earths here will actually be uh, quite interesting to live on. And honestly this is a, a pretty cool looking system and I think this is probably one of the cooler systems I've created in Universe Sandbox. Um, and uh, if it wasn't for the scientific research of uh, these two scientists, specifically Andrew Smith and Jack uh, Lee Sauer, 
uh, from the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Stanford University. I wouldn't really even be able to create this system because they were able to do all the math for me and found that the most stable uh, distance between two Earths is about to uh, 8 to 12 hill spheres. And with 12 hill spheres being a lot, a lot more stable. Anyway, so this is uh, one of the first videos I'm going to do on this. Come back tomorrow to learn something else and we're going to explore this in a little bit more detail in the future videos as well. Thank you for watching guys. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you still haven't. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.